I, I searched, I went this last trip, I went with uh, Barry Rand, who's the former CEO of uh, Avis Rental Car, and Boone Powell, former CEO of Baylor Medical. I went with Josh McDowell. You know Josh McDowell? I want Josh McDowell. He made it up the mountain, 65 years old. I, fuck, I took five guys over 65 up the mountain. It was hard getting up the trail with all those walkers with the tennis balls, you know. <laughs> Josh did a good, if you see Josh, tell him. He did a pretty good job. And uh, we went up to this object, and it just blew our minds. And the, and the world was saying, wow, you know, maybe. This looks pretty, pretty convincing. In fact, I was introducing my wife earlier right here. I, let me tell you a funny story. On Mount Ararat in Turkey, I climbed Mount Ararat in Turkey one, one year, and we had terrorists come around us. They had killed three Russians uh, the week before. Uh, my guide broke his knee or dislocated his knee in a, in a, in a bad fall. Um, I, I lost my lead climber uh, to whatever. He, we couldn't find him. He came down the wrong side of the mountain. And then the clouds all came in, and we felt that we were going to get snowed on. The terrorists were there. Avalanches were coming down. The, the rocks were as big as boulder, as houses. And I'm, I called my wife on the cell phone. I said, Terry, uh, I'm in a bad situation. I want to tell you, honey, I love you and I'm in a bad situation. She says, can I ask you a question? I remember cupping the phone and the wind, the howling wind. I said, yes, what is the question? And she said, I am now standing in front of the washing machine at home. Called her by satellite phone. She says, I'm putting a load of laundry in the washing machine, and when I put it in, it wobbles. Can you tell me how to fix it? There's a woman of faith. She says, I knew you'd be okay. I had two screaming kids, and I had a problem, and I needed to talk to my husband, and he's out running around on a mountain. That's a true story with my wife. Another true story is I went up there with a, a man named Daryl Scott, and I went with John Tomlin. You know, you know who Daryl Scott and John Tomlin are? They, they're parents of, of men from Columbine High School. Um, went up with them on one of these trips uh, to Mount uh, Sabalon. And we went up there on the mountain, and I took them out of it because I said, look, your children were just killed at Columbine High School. You need to get away. The media is driving you crazy. You're having to dig this wound up every, every week. So let's go over and look for um, Noah's Ark. Let's have fun. Let's have a kind of a getaway on this thing. And they loved it. They said, let's go. And as we went on the Jeep, we bounced for about two, three days, big smiles on their face, having fun, having fellowship. We get up on this high plateau, about 12,000 feet, and, and I said, guys, let's get out the food and let's have dinner. And my guide says, I gave away all the food. No food. I said, what do you mean you gave away all the food? He says, I gave, Mr. Bob, I gave away all the food. I said, you create, what, what are you doing giving away the food? He says, I, I needed directions to get up here. No food. I said, okay, what are we going to do, Ollie? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And there was a, 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 down below there was this camp. It was a nomad camp. With the picture, there's, here's the, the, the exact nomad camp right here. We're up on the mountain. You can see what it looked like. And we were up there, and I went to the, the elder, and I said, I want to buy a sheep to eat. And he says, great. He shot a rifle near. Uh, his son or somebody brought this little lamb down, tied in the hooves, and he brought it down, and we negotiated $35 without the pelt. So we're going to kill this lamb. And he set it down in front of me. I gave him the money, and then they walked away. And I looked at this lamb, I said, oh, wait, 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 wait. When I get meat, it's on a styrofoam dish and has plastic on it. Tells me how much it weighs, what it costs. I, well, what are we going to do? I'm not going to kill this thing. 20 bucks. He says, okay. Kid comes over. By this time, my men are down, and they're petting the little lamb. <laughs> I said, don't name it. And they named it, they named it Lamb Chop. Boy came over with a knife and put it right up against the throat of this animal, the sharp knife. Set it right there. Are you vegetarian? I'm seeing these. Are you, are you vegetarian? You know where the term vegetarian comes from? It's an old, that's right. It's an old Indian term that means lousy hunter. <laughs> and like wind going across the grass, the blade did its work. The little animal quivered and fell into the blood. That night, Daryl was looking at it and said, I'd like to name this valley Rachel's Valley. That's his daughter was killed at Col Columbine. And then the other father was John Tomlin. John's a big guy, kind of a gentle giant guy. And uh, he said to me, Bob, 
This lamb has done nothing. It is innocent. There was another innocent lamb that died 2,000 years ago. This lamb died so that we would have physical food. That lamb 2,000 years ago died that we would have spiritual food. And the blood that was from that lamb is the only solvent that's capable of washing away your sins. There is no other way, there's no other collateral to get forgiveness and eternal life. I think that a lot of these things over here that we look at are exciting. I believe it gives God's pleasure when He sees how hard that I try. Am I right with all these discoveries? I cannot say that I am. I can say that I'm only encouraged. But guys, it doesn't matter one lick if we find Noah's ark over on a mountain and you are not on the real ark of Jesus. Those that were on the ark survived. Those that were off the ark, they perished. A lot of people are saying, well, the Bible is not true. Taking the original intent, the original pen of the authors, the Bible has never, ever, 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 ever proven to be wrong. Never. It has never proven to be wrong. God's revelation has never wrong. Man's interpretation is wrong a lot. Man has messed it up a lot. Committees that translate a lot of these translations have messed it up a lot. And they have an agenda. And there's no agenda with God other than your salvation. God is the author. Salvation is the end. And truth without any mixture of error is the content. The Bible is and shall remain to the end of the world man's supreme standard by which he should live. You're going to be talked to this weekend about Christ. I'm not, I'm not the evangelist. I'm just a guy that goes and looks for old things. I look for durable rubbish. It's called archaeology. I want to tell you, it's an honor to stand on this platform. And it's more of an honor to be in the room where my old police friend, Sig Swanstrom, took the time to read to me from the Bible after I was questioning my salvation. And gentlemen, there's a long distance from that carpet where I knelt down and prayed that night to this podium. I do not feel worthy to be up here. But I am so grateful for that blood on Calvary because without it, I would not have forgiveness of a sinful life and guaranteed salvation. I want to thank you for having me here tonight.